Art Museum. I'm going to share a story with you today that matches up with a painting that lives in the Manoogian Gallery in the museum. That painting is called The Great Florida Sunset, and it was painted more than 100 years ago in 1887 by a man named Martin Johnson Heed. Martin Johnson Heed loved tropical things. He loved to paint jungly landscapes, and he loved hummingbirds and orchids. And so when you look at the painting, The Great Florida Sunset, he, you can really see that he loved exotic locations. You can see the beautiful swampy area with tropical birds in it, and you can also see some trees that reminded me of a book that I really love that I'm going to share with you today. If you look in the distance in the painting, you can see some trees that don't grow in Minnesota. They're called palm trees, and I want you to notice them when you see them in this book. This painting is also really huge. It's four and a half feet tall and eight feet wide. So when you stand in front of this painting, you can do exactly what the little boy in this story does. You can imagine yourself traveling to a faraway place. Now, before we read the story, you're gonna have to be ready to do four things while I read it. They're gonna come up a couple of times in the story. One of them is roaring, like as loud as you can, like a monster. So just take a second and practice roaring. Awesome. Another thing you're gonna have to be able to do is gnashing. And that is basically a fancy word for making your teeth grind together, like this. Like a monster who has big teeth might do. Even for fun monsters do this, I think. Okay, so roaring, gnashing. The next thing is something I can't actually do, but monsters apparently can. It's rolling your eyes. So if you can roll your eyes, go ahead. Maybe you just want to make your eyes look big and scary, or maybe you want to kind of move your head around and look like your eyes are rolling, but that's what's going to happen in this book. And finally, you need to be able to show your claws. You should be doing this at home to get ready because it's going to happen in the story. Okay, so we have roaring, gnashing, rolling, and showing. Are you ready? Excellent. I am too. Here we go. The story is called Where the Wild Things Are. And it was written by Maurice Sendak, and he also painted all the pictures. And don't forget to look for those special trees I mentioned before. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another, his mother called him wild thing and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew and grew and grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max and he sailed off through night and day, and in and out of weeks, and almost over a year, to where the wild things are. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars. Okay, now it's your turn. <laughs> And they gnashed their terrible teeth. They rolled their terrible eyes. And 
They showed their terrible claws. Till Max said, be still, and tamed them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened. And they called him the most wild thing of all. And made him king of all wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. It's a rumpus. It's still a rumpus. More rumpus. Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then all around from far away across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of the, where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up, we love you so. And Max said, no. The wild things roar their terrible roars. And they gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye and sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day, and into the night of his very own room, where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. And that's the end. I love this book because it tells me two really important things. One really important thing is, that even if you have had a day where you're super grumpy and you roar and you gnash your teeth and you show your claws, even if you feel like the grumpiest monster ever, you're still you and the people who love you still love you. I think that's an awesome thing to learn from a book. The other thing I love about that book is the way Max steps into a world that is in his imagination and has a journey there, and it's the same kind of journey you can have if you go to visit a museum and look at a painting. So I hope you enjoyed this story, and I hope that you will have a chance to go and visit the painting, The Great Florida Sunset, at the Marine Art Museum sometime soon. Mm -hmm.